ladies and gentlemen. Now today I will be talking to you guys about the uh, Greek guy Sophides, or as it's commonly known as in the modern day society, as a Greek belly bow. Now, what is a Greek Gastrophides? Well, the Greek Gastrophides type weaponry was an extremely powerful crossbow. How powerful, you guys might ask? Well, technically view it as today as a high quality, uh, top graded modern day crossbow. Here's the thing. The highest one that be pretty much could go up to around uh, 110 pounds in draw weight. So in other words, you had to have that uh, different types of systematic, well, loading process. Well, with this type of crossbow, the Greeks actually managed to secure human beings with a type of draw weight that nearly goes up to 900. So, or maybe even further, as long as I'm pretty much informed. So, why do we nowadays believe oh, crossbows were a commodity back then? Here's the thing, the Greek Casafides was a different type of crossbow. In fact, the way they actually managed to get that high acceleration or massive draw weight in the first place was actually pretty impressive. Instead of actually pulling, instead of like putting the crossbow on the ground and drawing the string back, what they did is push the mechanism forward, hence the name Belly Bow. But technically there are two reasons why it was nicknamed Belly Bow. Reason one? You loaded it from your stomach region, and number two, you technically fired it from your stomach region. Now, the Greek belly bow is probably one of the most impressive weapons in history, first invented by uh, Philip of Macedon, in other words, Alexander's father, but Alexander the Great improved it. How much improved? Well, technically, he turned it from Philip's design to the design that him, his, him and his army used. And that design of the Greek belly bow was rather used most of the time. So you guys might ask, okay, so the Greeks invented it. Well, here's the thing. It was made by the Macedonians, not the Greeks. Even though the Greeks, even though the Macedonians were a form of Greek society, they're kind of, well, labeled as non-Greeks. It's weird, I know. But the thing is... The weapon was pretty much used by Alexander's army, and pretty much used up until some time until... Like, the Dark Ages. In other words, this weapon was pretty much used until the Vindal period. In fact, the last people to actually use this crossbow were the Celts. Pretty much of Pitland, or Britannia, or including some parts of Ireland, we're told. But as well, the crossbow is extremely dangerous. Reason why? Well, here's the reason. This weapon is actually known to skewer through any type of armor. Now, that, you guys might ask, how is that possible? Well, as I said, it has a heavier pound draw weight, and most crossbows uh, that we had during the medieval period, or even our modern day period, can't pull back that much without any type of mechanism. For example, when it comes to the windless crossbow, you pretty much have to have a hand crank in order to, well, have it to work properly or including the German Handkrank an Stitten, which technically you had to rotate it like, well, like a crank has to be used. If you guys don't know what this type of crossbow looked like, it would technically be like that type of crossbow you would have seen in, uh, well, Game of Thrones, which, yeah, but anyways. This crossbow, though, the Greek Castrophides was impressively badass, though there were some pros and cons. Mainly, the biggest pro part about it, the good thing about it, was technically it could secure for human beings, and plus it didn't take that far long to load. Problem is though, in order to load it, you had to push it down. So, in other words, into the ground. So, if you were technically, say, in muddy terrain, this thing wouldn't work properly. So, what did the Greeks have to do? They innovated it. In other words, they took something like a wooden bowl or bone bowl or something type of bowl that would technically be big enough to actually, uh, well, have the front end of the crossbow be placed in. In doing so, they would push it down to the ground and it wouldn't, well, get muddied or whatever. And now, this would actually be impressive, but this had come out sometime after Alexander's death, so we wouldn't see it that much. But now, what we do know about this badass crossbow is that if you get skewered by it, you're technically dead. In fact, no armor at the time could stop this weapon. For example, say if I, I'm a Celtic warrior with my shield, my steel helmet, 
my chainmail and padded armor, here's the thing, that thing is going to still skewer right through the shield, through my mail, and through my padded, and even kill me in the process. Even a modern day helmet couldn't stop that thing. In fact, even some people even say it stopped it, but it made the blows of the blow of the weapon itself was so dangerous that it could actually kill a person. In fact, it's even stated that some Greeks actually got their neck snapped just from the blow of the weapon hitting their helmets. Now, that's actually kind of terrifying. Now, the only reason Alexander the Great survived from one of these weapons, such as the Siege of Tyre, if you guys don't know this type of from this battle, it's, it's stated that none other than Alexander the Great was skewered by a type of weapon. We don't know if there was a ballista or scorpion. We don't know what it was, but it was stated that Alexander the Great took an arrow. Now, it was stated the precise arrow length was the same size that would have been used on a Greek Gasophides. And now, these were perfect for siege weaponry. Well, technically for the ones that were being besieged, because you put it on the castle wall, put it down, put it back up, fire, and so on and so on. So, that's what the siege of Tyre did. It's actually, it's stated that Alexander the Great got shot by one of these. He had himself a bronze-covered wooden shield. Now, in other words, it went right through the bronze, right through the wood, missed his arm somehow, but in the process, got him in the somewhere in the chest area when he was wearing a bronze cuirass, a a, lower, a type of a uh, which if you guys don't realize, a bronze cuirass is a type of armor that would have been used by Spartans or whatever type of Greeks that it could afford it. Now, later on, it's even stated that it even went through his. Uh, Lenothorax, which is a type of, well, Greek wo Greek uh, type body weight armor that could stop arrows, which is quite impressive, really. And it did. Thing is, though, it skewered right through it, and in the process got into his padded armor. The only way is how Alexander the Great survived, because it only went that much into his flesh. Literally, this much. And now that's not enough to kill a person. And this was with a dangerous arrowhead, guys. This was an early, like a very late Bronze Age uh, bodkin tip. Or technically Iron Age bodkin tip, whichever way you want to put it as. And in doing so, this thing could have skewered right through Alexander if he hadn't lift his shield by doing so. Because technically it was holding like, like somewhere around, since this was strapped onto his arm, it would have gone here and into here. So, I'm kind of surprised he survived. Now, these weapons were later on adopted by Rome, but the Romans later on got rid of these for a different lighter crossbow, just for their infantry to use on the battlefield. In fact, later on, the crossbow was no longer seen on the battlefield. So, why was the Greek Astrophides given up? Well, it's quite simple, really. The manufacturing process, the types of, well, arrowheads needed, and including the type of manpower you need to push it down to full draw weight. In fact, it stated the crossbow could go up to uh, 1,000 pounds of draw weight. I'm not certain if that's true or not, or maybe that's a myth, I'm not certain. But it stated this crossbow would have been used by Celtic mercenaries that were, in, that were adopted, who adopted it from uh, Alexander's army, who were, were technically from the time when Alexander's death. In fact, the Celts, as I stated before, the Celts pretty much served as mercenaries to Alexander the Great. So, in doing so, they adopted this crossbow. In fact, even the Dacian Celts used this crossbow for purposely using it against the Romans, and even Roman legionnaires were skewered by these crossbows. So, why didn't Rome adopt this crossbow? Well, the thing is, Rome isn't that perfect. In fact, Rome thought that these crossbows were inefficient. They didn't work. Well, here's the thing. They did. If you could skewer a man with one bolt or even probably two, it's probably the best crossbow you can actually have in history. Now, why don't we have a modern-day version of these? Well, that's quite clear, really, because these would have been made out of wood and steel and some hinu. So, yeah. Plus, technically, this thing had, a, like, a torsion power of, like, a catapult, almost. In other words, if you even get up close, even though the guy doesn't shoot you with the crossbow bolt, and you would technically get up, like, say, face close to him, or technically, uh, in this point, a uh, crossbow, in the face of that crossbow bolt, well, when it's unloaded, the crossbow, I mean, what happens is, the crossbow actually has what you might call a type of torsion type piece. Meaning, say this arm, my hand right here, is like 
the bow sh but bow itself now see this right here say so that like see this finger is the uh, type of well you know the type of the bow sh the bow itself and in order to load it you technically gotta push this type of mechanism this mechanism would have been pushed downward in other words say like if I pushed this loaded it in the process so in other words if I fire it guess what's gonna go forward that's gonna be the underbelly of the crossbow bow this crossbow piece with a wooden type beam in other words you pushed it forward you push that thing down that thing's gonna go up allowing the bow to go downward in other words when one thing goes up the other thing goes down so in other words, if someone gets close enough to nearly go in melee attack, that's still a dangerous flaw. Because in doing so, the guy does pull the, well, the trigger mechanism, he could technically hit you, say if he hits you in your chest, you're going to have your heart, well, technically shot out of, your, shot out of its area. In other words, you're technically going to be dead. Or as well, if he hits you in the head, broken neck. Now, as well, if that thing had a bolt on it as well, it could probably fly through you and kill the next guy behind you. In fact, the Persians were not immortal of this. Since the Persians had wicker shields and hardly any armor, you can see why this weapon was extremely dangerous for a Persian immortal. Because pretty much the only people that had uh, good quality armor were Persians immortals, and they only had scale armor with a mixture of, well, leather or some sort of cotton. But it's well sometimes even Persians actually did have cotton armor, but that still wouldn't have stopped this crossbow bolt. In doing so, this crossbow could have actually changed military history. So why didn't we use it in the medieval period? Well, that's quite clear. Most of these crossbows were later on given up, or later on destroyed by either Vikings or the Romans, we don't know. But the crossbow itself was probably the most impressive crossbows in history, and I myself want to get one just to show you guys on how dangerous these things were. In fact, it's even stated if these things kept on being used, maybe by the Romans or later on even by the Normans, there might have been a lot more of them. But I can see why no one would want these, because it does take a lot of manpower to just push the thing down and then reload it and fire it and so on and so on. When it comes to a modern, when it comes to an early medieval crossbow, you just gotta pull it back, put the bow, put the arrow on the string or the bolt on the so on and so on, and fire it. But the thing is, the Greek castrophetes, if you get killed by that thing uh, or even shot by one, you're not gonna come back. In fact, it's stated that even if you get, say, a uh, flesh wounds from, like, seeing your arm or your leg the power of the crossbow bolt itself would have been so powerful that it could snap your arm out of its socket, your leg, or who knows what. But yeah, these crossbows are extremely dangerous. In fact, they managed to go throughout Rome, the Dacian Celts, and many other Celtic kingdoms, as well parts of the ancient Greek Empire. In fact, it's even stated the Egyptians, or the Ptolemaic dynasty, kept using it until the time when the Romans conquered them. So... Why do we not know this type of crossbow anymore? Well, that's the thing. It's kind of an unknown crossbow, and it's been forgotten for ages. But a lot of people still... But here's the weird thing. The Romans still used it for... Well, by the time, I should say, from the late Roman Empire, the Romans were stated to have actually used these for uh, defending castle walls or walls of their city or whatever. Which is quite impressive how the Romans still used these things. In fact, these were things were light ballistas. In other words, these things could have been carried to and from a city to a battlefield in less than a, well, a minute. When it came to scorpions, those things took about, well, an hour to set up from a city to whatever. In fact, that's probably why Alexander the Great made the Greek Castrophetes so durable and light. He wanted his army to be quick with the crossbows. He wanted them to attack, attack, attack. Not just wait the next few minutes for the crossbow, for the bolt to be fired out of a, or missile to be launched out of one of these scorpions. So, why didn't the Romans believe in this? We don't know. 
But anyways, guys, if you guys want me to talk more about this but at S crossbow and other weapons that were later on adopted into history, let me know down in the comments below. Please like this episode, and as well, subscribe to the channel for more videos, so that way you guys can keep up with them. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Have a good day.